Hello everyone, this video is my Little Nightmares speedrun tutorial. This video is going to be aimed at the people trying to get the hard to the core achievement or trophy. The description for that one is what's different about you, why are you so brave, but essentially you have to beat the game in under an hour without dying, which is no easy task. Most of the game isn't too difficult, but there's about three areas that I think might cause you a problem. I'll do my best to timestamp those areas in the description if you want to go and practice them before you actually attempt to run. Although you might have to play through a couple of chapters to get to those sections. But like I said, if you want to check them out and maybe figure out what you've got to do, I should timestamp those in the description for you. Thank you all very much for tuning into the video. If you want to show some support to me, feel free to just leave a like and a comment. Let me know if this helped you out or whatever. If you want to support me a bit further, you can always follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash iframes. And you can find the link for that down in the pinned comment below this video. Again, thank you all very much for tuning into the video. Let's get this going. Okay, so we've got a short little cutscene at the beginning of the game here. I've probably mentioned this in the intro to this video, but uh, there's only really three areas in the game that I consider to be pretty difficult. Most of the game can be done with simple strategies that are easy to replicate. But there are three areas where you can really get screwed with bad luck. I'll point those out as we go through. Like I said, I've probably already mentioned this in the intro, but I'll try to timestamp those areas in case you want to practice them before you actually do this run. But for the most part, this game is pretty simple. Alright, so when you start, you want to jump out of the suitcase and head over here to your right. You'll see me jumping a lot, and that's because jumping is faster than running. That can save you a little bit of time. Obviously, this run's timed. I won't be using glitches or speedrun tricks with this run. But you just want to open the vent there and crawl into the vent. We're just following it along for the moment. We have just under an hour. I think there was one area where I got a glitch that I've never seen before. And one thing to mention before we get too far into this is that if you do reach an area where the game glitches out for some reason and something weird happens... You, and you don't die, you can back out to the main menu, load the game, and it won't count as a death. You are allowed to do that, because that happened to me, and uh, I still got my achievement at the end of this run. So, like I said, if you get the same glitch as me, which is probably going to be pretty rare, or something strange happens where the game's not progressing for some reason, or you're stuck, you can just back out and load the game. As long as you don't die, you're fine. So, when you get to here, you need to pull this chair over to the door so that you can open it. There is a way you can just jump on the plank in the back right corner of the room and jump to the handle, but it's kind of difficult to get right. It's kind of a speedrun trick, and I don't want to use those. I kind of just want to make this run as easy to follow as possible. So, we're continuing right here. We need to open up the fridge, and then we can use the shelves as a ladder to climb up. Simple stuff so far. I had a lot of fun doing this run. I do really enjoy doing these challenge runs. Also, if you're looking for collectibles for the game, I've got a video up for that. I'll try to link it around for anybody who's interested. I was trying to do this run on stream for a while. And I kept dying in the same areas. And then I attempted it off stream. And of course, the first attempt off stream, I managed to get it done. Which is pretty frustrating. It can be a little bit distracting though when you're doing stuff on stream sometimes. Just because you're trying to conversate with people and stuff. Pulling the plank off the door here and heading to your right. You're going to fall through the floor about here. If you hit a jump you can get a little bit more distance. You don't have to do that though. Be careful of the leeches. Turn on your lighter. Make sure you're using your lighter. You kind of just want to zigzag your way through these guys. As these sections are at the very beginning of the game you tend to get a lot of practice doing these. We need to jump this gap. And we're going to climb up these ladders here. I'm not going to go for any of the collectibles during this run. Be careful running across this plank. Just line yourself up properly. Don't go too fast. If you just try and run for it, you can mess up the angle and end up falling, which will mean an early death. Same with this jump here. Just line it up properly. There's no need to rush. As long as you get through relatively fast, you'll have plenty of time to do this under an hour. Like I, th I think for me, the game time 
here was like 45 minutes. The video is a bit longer than that, but you can check how long the game took you to beat by checking your save file. And I think it took about 45 minutes for me. After pulling that crank, you want to just run as fast as you can. You can get, do a couple of jumps to gain some extra distance and get across there a little bit faster. And you want to slide through the door before it closes. And then we're going to come across here and climb up this blanket rope and into the vent. All the way up. All of this stuff is pretty simple. If you've beaten the game before, you should know how to do most of this, but it doesn't hurt to show you guys how to do it all. So you want to run through this door and then close it again just by running into it and pushing it shut. And then we're going to grab this crate of TP and drag it towards this switch a little bit and then we can jump from the crate of TP to the switch. And as soon as you drop down, you want to start moving to the right. And we're going to go through this gate here. And uh, yeah, like I mentioned before, jumping is faster. So if you want to get through this area a little bit quicker to make sure you make this without dying before the timer resets and the gate turns back on and it gets electrified. Just keep jumping. Six does reach a point where she starts to run out of stamina and she's running a little bit slower too and the jumps don't get as much distance. But even still, jumping is still quicker. So when you reach this point, we're going to wait behind this pillar. And when the eye moves away, we're going to move into the middle. And again, wait for it to move to the left. And then off we go. We're going to climb up these crates. Ignoring all, the, all of those collectibles. I think I saved one gnome. Just because it was right along the path. I wanted to save one gnome for good luck, I guess. <laughs> so once you get to the top there, you want to head to your right and through this door. And when you get in here, run to the bed and slide under it and just wait under the bed. If you want to be extra speedy, you can just run for it here, and as long as you're fast, you can get past this guy. But if you want to play it safe, which I highly recommend, just wait. Just wait for him to move off to the left. And when he goes past the bed, you can start moving. Just make sure you're staying crouched, and about here you can start running if you want to. I wouldn't light up the lighter in that room. I think that guy's blind, so he might not see it, but I've never really checked. I don't know if he'll detect you if you light up the light, because it does make a sound. We're going to climb up the crates there, onto this shelf, and then onto this shelf, and then through the opening right here. We're into another vent then. You can kind of get stuck on the... I guess the welds here? The bolts? Where the vents join? So you want to line up with the middle? Doesn't really matter though. So when you reach here, Six is going to get her first hunger pain. And she'll start walking a bit slower. But again, if you jump, you can gain more distance and get through this area a bit quicker. But she'll still get stopped by the hunger. You actually get one of these sections in every chapter where Six gets hungry. This is the first. Even though you encounter the janitor guy with the long arms, he's not really a problem until the second chapter. You don't really have to deal with him that much in this chapter. But eat the food. Get that down, Neil. And once you're done with that, we're going to climb up these boxes and through the opening in the bars here. Then we need to keep going to our right. Again, keep jumping if you want to save some time. Keep doing your thing. I mean, you can kind of tell just by looking at it how much faster it is. Usually I wouldn't do stuff like this because it can get a bit tedious jumping all the time. But as this is a timed run, you know, I'm trying to save as much time as possible. Jump across here to the back and up the gate. Uh, the, the gated box, I guess, up here, and then up these boxes as well. And we need to make a jump to this crate that is swinging back and forward. You can see it's sort of moving because we're on a big ship. You just want to make sure it's swinging towards you when you go for the jump. I had good time in there, so I could just go for it straight away. If you jump while it's all the way away from you, you'll tend to miss the jump. So just wait for it to sway back to you. You can stand there and wait. You're really not too pressed for time during this run. 
But then we're climbing up the chain, jump into this ledge, and then climbing up these boxes to get up here. And there's a switch we need to pull in the back. Pull that switch. Once the box starts coming up, come over to this switch and pull it to the right. And pretty much straight away, you can move it back over to the left. You don't have to move it all the way. And uh, that'll give you enough time to jump to it. If you move the switch all the way to the left, you're going to have less time to make that jump. So it's a good idea just to move it past the halfway point. That's all you've really got to do. And then jump to the box. Okay, so when we're over here, we need to pull out the bottom cabinet on the left. Pull it all the way out. Hop up onto the cabinet. And then pull the next drawer out as well, about halfway or so. And then jump up onto it. And then you can jump over to the right and onto this filing cabinet. And then over here and pull the switch. Sorted. And we're going to go through these bars. And then we just want to push this box down this hole. Wait for the noose to come up. Grab onto that and that'll take you back down. Don't really feel like six is a good counterway for this box, but whatever. And we're at the bottom. Alright, so... Let's go over all the way over to the right. You can pretty much run to the middle for most of this and then just move up a little bit to get around the last leech. As long as you're running at full speed, you shouldn't get grabbed by the first bunch of leeches, but you need to avoid the last one. And then we can head through these bars now that we've turned the electricity off. So let's keep going. We've got another section with one of these eyes that can turn you to stone here. I made it all the way to the second thing you can take cover on, but you might find... Um, that the pattern's a little bit different to you. It's kind of time, timing based. So if you need to wait on behind the first obstacle for the eye to move out of the way, don't hesitate to do that. I'll keep mentioning it, but I did this run a lot faster um, than an hour. So you've got plenty of time. You want to move here as quick as you can, jump the gap, and then hop up onto this box to get ready to jump up onto the ledge. There we go. And that's the first chapter done. Only three more to go. What was that, like 11 minutes or so? Something like that. I think this next chapter is probably the longest one. Okay. So, heading up these stairs. All the way up. This area is pretty simple. There is a, an area you can go into on your right at the top of these stairs, but... All that's in there are a couple of collectibles and um, it's like a, a room where you can look sort of into a security camera type deal. But we don't want to do that. We're just going to keep following the stairs all the way up. We don't need to do that. We're just going to go all the way up here and into this opening next to the door. You need to hop up on the box, hop through the window and there is a faster way you can do this by jumping up on the toilet onto the sink and then grabbing the sort of, I guess, chest, really big chest of drawers, the tall chest of drawers. But this is the, the easiest way to do it. Just drag the suitcase over, jump up, pull the switch onto the bed and then climb up here. And that'll allow you to jump across to get to the key. But you just want to go all the way up to the top, hop up onto the next shelf and then over to the next chest down here onto this box and you can grab the key and just jump jump down onto the bed that way you're not going to take any damage i'm pretty sure if you jump off that tall table you'll more than likely die we're just going to play it nice and safe run over here chuck the key up onto the ledge jump up pick the key back up and then use it to open the door jobs are good and so we're going to come down here grab the monkey on the floor, chuck it at the switch, and that's going to bring the elevator to us. There is stuff on the elevator for you to grab so you can chuck it at the switch that's inside, but if you just grab the monkey, it's the quickest way to do it. Grab the monkey, come in, and chuck it at the switch. And we're just waiting now for the elevator to reach the bottom. And this is where Six gets her 
next set of hunger pains, just down this next hallway. It's actually not that far from the last one. But let's go. Again, jump in to save a little bit of time. She's so hungry. Really looking forward to Little Nightmares 2. I'm sure by the time some of you are watching this, Little Nightmares 2 is out. Um, if you're looking for guides on that game, I'm going to do my best to get the guides out for it as soon as possible. I'm guessing some people will want to come back and play this one if you've played the second one and not the first one. Maybe you want to get this achievement. This was one of the last achievements for this game I had to do. This was the last achievement I had to do for the main game. I've still got some stuff to do with the DLC. Alright, let's keep going. I'm not sure if you have another hunger pain. At this point, you can't jump or sprint, though. You're kind of forced just to walk slowly. Let's get over here and eat this meat in the cage. We're going to get locked in. That man's got some long arms. So, you're going to wake up in the cage, and you can see the janitor dragging away a cage here. And if you just keep moving, try attempting to move, eventually Six will stand up. I think for some reason Six stood up quicker for me here. You'll see a sort of jolt up in a second, which was a bit weird. Usually, um, the animation for her standing up is a bit longer, but whatever. It's a little bit of time save, I'll take it. It's only a second or so, though. It's not really important. So once you bust out of the cage for which you're going to have to move left and right and slam against it for it to drop come over here and grab this cage with the kid inside it and drag it underneath this switch. Jump up grab the switch and you're going to need to swing a little bit. So swing back and forth a couple of times and then jump for the door and you want to sprint when you hit the floor slide under to make sure you make it and then turn around and climb up the gate that drops over the door and then jump over here to this platform. Then we're going to slide through the opening here. I just missed the slide, but never mind. So in this room, you can just run through it by jumping across this gap. Keep running. Make sure you're standing on the fabric to make less noise. Jump across here. Jump up on top of the cages. Keep sprinting. Jump over here and slide through the opening. As long as you're quick with that, the long arm guy won't find you. It's a pretty straightforward room. Slap the switch in as soon as you come through. You want to do this as quick as possible. And once you've turned the switch once, like once all the way around, start moving towards the trapdoor and slide through and you'll be good to go. Um, that area really isn't difficult at all. It's a very copyable strap. Very repli replicable. I don't think that strat's ever failed me. As long as you're quick and you make the jump, stick to the fabric, you'll be fine. Okay, so moving all the way across then. We're going to jump down here, and you want to jump off the suitcase into the shoes and keep moving straight forward until you get to the first suitcase. Make sure you're holding climb when you go to climb here. You can't tap it. And we're going to jump up here to the next suitcase, jump on that, jump diagonally here, over towards this suitcase, and that's it. You're done. You don't have to wait around. As long as you're quick, you can make it nice and easy alright so right here we're going to have to run away from the janitor again I, I recommend jumping because it is quicker you need to slide under this pole so be ready for that keep jumping get yourself some extra distance make sure you stay away from him and onto the elevator then and into this box in the back corner to stay safe from him He's going to press the button for you. How nice. What a gentleman. <laughs> right, and off he goes. So, now that he's gone... 
let's head out of the elevator pretty much as soon as he runs out. You could come out of the box and out of the elevator. We need to push this box out of the way and then run to the other end of the floorboard with the monkey on it and that will take us underground and we're going to wait here for the janitor to leave. Just wait for a few seconds and he'll head over to the right. Off he goes. And when he goes through this door, we're going to climb up. Up we go. So, the monkey here you want to throw towards the shelf in the back. Don't throw it all the way left, because sometimes he won't hear it if you do that. Kind of try and throw it where I did just there. Like I said, if you throw it backwards, sometimes he just won't hear it. And when you try and come through here, he'll grab you. But yeah, when he's investigating that one, you don't want to sprint while you're crouching. Because if you sprint while you're crouching, you can move a little bit faster. Just crouch at normal speed until he goes through the door. Come in. And then throw the other monkey to get his attention again. And then you can climb up this shelf. Push this box out of the way and into the vent. Nice and easy. Very straightforward. All the way down. Keep heading through these vents. And right here, he's leaving. You ain't got to worry too much about him. I'm going to jump across here. Try to stick to the carpet as much as possible because you make less noise. Push down the door. And wait around here where the two carpets join. And you need to grab this shoe that's right here. Make sure you're crouching. You don't want him to hear. You can stand up here somewhere. Chuck the shoe at the switch. And get going. When the clocks strike they'll sort of deafen him and that'll give you opportunity to get away and we're going to slide through the door here and into this room jump up onto the shelf here we need to climb up the bookshelf all the way up and you've got to make the jump to this piano again it's because you're on the ship it's doing this whole swaying sort of thing so make sure you time this jump properly. You might want to wait until it comes towards you. I played it a bit risky there. If you want to play it extra safe, just wait till it swing it back towards you. So that you'll definitely make that jump. If it's all the way away from you, you won't make that jump, so be careful. When you climb up here, wait here for the janitor to go away. Just wait a few seconds for him to move off to the left. And then climb up. That way, he won't spot you or hear you when you're coming past well you've got to use the switch right here he'll move up to the top of the next area and we're going to come through here and jump up this pile of books yeah, you kind of want to head for that pile of books when he's at the back there moving around that first shelf and we're going to crouch all the way here I don't sprint while crouching I'm just using the normal crouch and when you reach here, you can release crouch pretty much. You're going to drop down and then just keep moving all the way down. Hop up this pile of books. Climb up and through the vent. He's going to hear you, but providing you're quick, he won't get around to you in time. So come into this room, grab the crank. Leave the crank by the door right here. And then come over here and press the switch on the TV. Run back to the crank and pick it up. And... Wait about here by the door. Make sure you're crouched. The janitor's going to come in to check out the TV. So, once he's sort of past the suitcase, you can start moving through the door. And we're going to go under the table here. Keep going, keep going. You can run at this point. And we're going to slip through the hole in the shelf right here. And come over here. And then put a crank in its place. You'll need to turn it a couple of times. Twice should be enough. Hop up and then go for the jump. If you need to wait right there for the piano to come back to you, you should have enough time to wait for it to come back. But then you're going to jump over and through the opening. And then you need to drag this cart over this way. You don't need to pull it this way too much because you've got to push it on top of the steam. You can't stand on top of that steam because it'll kill you if you do. So move around to the other side and push the cart on top of the steam. And then you can either make this jump here or you can jump on top of the cart if you want to. It's less risky to go for the jump across the gap 
you time it wrong, then you might end up jumping over the steam and getting yourself killed. So pull it over a bit, run around the other side, push it all the way to the end, and that'll allow you to jump up on top of it. And grab the door handle. Hold the door handle here, don't let go straight away. If you let go too early, you're going to fall off the ledge there. So you need to hold on to the door handle for a second or two longer. Um, can catch an easy death there, but as long as you hold on to the door for a second, you'll be fine. We're going to come into the vents here. And when you reach this point, you want to slow down, get crouched. Eventually, you're going to see the janitor's arm come through the wall. And when he reaches up, you can move past him. Make sure you're staying crouched as you move past him so he doesn't hear you. And then we're going to make our way to the opening. Right here, you want to move quick. Keep following the tracks. Slide through here. And go to the back left corner. Jump up a couple of boxes. And you want to jump diagonally here. So when he reaches to about this point, jump over his arm and come and pull the box. This is one of the areas I'd recommend practicing. Definitely one of the areas that could screw over your run. Probably one of the three toughest areas in the game. So jump over his arm again, same strategy. And we're done. So, let's climb up the box, hop over onto the vent lid, and then into the vent. Like I said, there's only really three areas in the game that I think are, are pretty tough, and that's one of them. You kind of might want to practice that, or just figure out exactly what it is that I'm doing. Problem is, with practicing that area, it's right at the end of a chapter, and the game will let you load chapters, but it doesn't let you load sections in a chapter. So, to, to even practice that point, you've got to play all the way through the chapter to get to it, which is kind of annoying. Um, but that strategy does work for me, you've just got to make sure that his arm that's closer to you moves far enough away. So, we're onto the kitchens now. We're going to come all the way along here. We need to jump on these hooks to get over to the kitchen. Let's grab this hook. I love how Six's legs keep moving if you try and move while you're hanging off, hang, hanging off these hooks. It's pretty cool. Right. Let's drop down. I'm going to have another one of Six's hunger pains here. Like I said, she gets one every chapter. I'm not sure if you stand in the mousetrap right there if it kills you, so you might want to avoid that. I don't think I've ever stood on it, but... Be careful. Nom nom. Protein. Okay, so we're going to hop up these boxes, now that we're well fed, and we're on to the kitchen section then. This is a lot of people's favourite part of the game. Let's push over the ledge for a little ramp heel, keep going all the way across, and up the stairs through the door. So, push the cart heel all the way across. Hop up right here, through the window, and slide through the opening here. And at this point, you want to crawl, uh, crouch. You can sprint while you're crouching. Like I said, holding sprint while you're crouching lets you move a little faster while you're crouching. When you reach that barrel, you can start running. Providing you're fast, you can just run through the kitchen here all the way under this table. And over to the back right corner, which is where you've got to climb up. As long as you're quick there, you should be able to do that exactly the same as me every time. So hop up here and make sure you're lining up the movement you're doing with these beams so that you don't fall. If you fall here, you will die. So make sure you, if you can run, providing you're going to run in a straight line, 
but just make sure that you're lining up your movement properly one misstep and you're going to fall off the beam there if you want to if you want to just move slowly and not sprint that's understandable so right here is where i had the glitch i was telling you guys about earlier on you want to come up the stairs and pull the switch right here so that when you do have the key you don't have to drop it and pull the switch it's just easier if you pull it right now so in this room i think i had to repeat this room because you've got to come up here jump up here grab the key and swing on it and then the dude in the bed wakes up so you need to slide under the bed but what happened to me is i think he, he like bugged out or something something weird happened and he just stood here walking on the spot i don't know what happened if he got stuck um, I tried to like run out on the right and make some noise to make him move. I've never seen this before, the first time it's ever happened to me, trust it to happen on my achievement run. But I guess it's good because it kind of confirms that if you get some kind of weird bug, you can go back to the main menu, load the game, and you'll still get your achievement providing you don't die. But yeah, I was trying to get his attention somehow, he just wasn't paying attention though. Maybe I could have thrown the music box at him or something like that, but... Um, yeah, I didn't really know what else I could do here, but just go back to the main menu and load the checkpoint. And keep my fingers crossed that it still gave me my achievement. And it did, so... Kind of a blessing in disguise, in the sense that it will show you guys that you can do this and still get your achievement. Obviously, I didn't die there. Just kind of annoying that that would happen. Let me know if you guys get any weird bugs like that that happen. At least you know... You can get around it. I'm not sure if you could kind of abuse abuse that if you wanted to during this run. Like if you were in a situation where you knew you were going to die, you could back out to the main menu and load the game. Like maybe during a long fall or something like that, you could do it. I mean, I can't 100% say that would work, but you never know, it might do. It's possible. I kind of got caught on the bed there and couldn't get under it very quickly, but never mind. But this is what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to just walk around the, the bed and leave kind of weird that he got stuck but whatever not all runs can be perfect so we're going to grab the key then when he leaves the room and head towards the elevator we just opened a minute ago right. when you step in it it's going to go down nice and we need to crouch here and go through the opening again, or this is the way I like to do it. And then, once you're in here, head towards the screen. I accidentally sprinted there, but you might want to make sure that you're crouching when you do this. Go underneath this long table where the cook was chopping meat earlier, and then through this opening. Drop down, and once you reach this point, you should be able to sprint. Without him hearing you. Stick to the side of the room closest to the screen. So that he doesn't see you from across the room and then come over here. Open up the lock. And we're going to come over and hop up the box here. Hop up onto the table. Hop up another box. And through the opening in the wall. We need to jump up on the dumb way to heal. Up we go. And we need to get three pieces of meat onto the trapdoor. One of them's right here on the shelf that we walk out onto. So just push it over here. I like to drag it to the back. Can be a bit finicky if you just try and push it to the closest edge. Especially as you've got to get another piece as well. And then we need to hop up the shelf right here. All the way up. Jump and grab the hook. And then jump and grab the next piece of meat. And then we're going to shove that onto the trapdoor as well. There we go. Alright, so back to the dumbwaiter. Down we go. And in this room is one of the gnomes. And uh, I like to hug him for good luck during these, run the, during these runs. <laughs> He's right under the table there. Give him a little hug. We saved one gnome. Hop up on the stool, and then onto this table, pull the switch to get the meat to come into the grinder, 
and then pull the switch to get the sausages to come out of this thing and then you can use those to swing over to the vent. So there's 13 gnomes in the game. You can save 12 of them. Like I mentioned, if you're looking for the locations for all the gnomes, I've got a video that shows all of the collectibles in the game and how to get those achievements or trophies if you're on PlayStation. So coming through the vent then, we're going to move all the way over to the right. And there's an elevator here that we need to pull a switch for. So let's pull the switch. As soon as you've pulled the switch, run back over to the left and into the open box here. And the big guy is going to come over and start looking through his food. Not sure if putting cheese in your pocket is a good idea, but whatever. Pocket cheese. So, when he moves around the other side of the crate, you can pretty much come out and just run for the elevator. When you step in the elevator anyway, he's gonna, no matter what you do, he's gonna spot you and chase you. Like, as soon as you get out of the elevator here, you wanna move to the right, and you're gonna see it's gonna close and go back down. And no matter what you do, he always does that. So you might as well just get out of that box and run for the elevator as soon as he moves around it like I did. And then we're going to jump in this vent. Just wait. He's going to come up here and try and look for you and not find you. And there's a switch to the door on the left side that he's about to go through when he walks into that room. You can come out of the vent and stay crouched here. He'll move towards the back table in that room. And we're going to move over here and underneath this table. All the way up to the back and then go left. There's another table we can get underneath right here. Move all the way to the left. And just wait here. He's going to split open his meat. And then he's going to come to the back to grab, I think it's a sausage or something. I thought he spotted me here, but he was just having a cough, which is pretty gross. But he comes over, grabs the sausage. Who doesn't like grabbing a good sausage? And then <laughs> let him come over to his meat when he turns back around. Come over here, jump up onto the table through the opening. And then you can sprint at this point. Come over here, press the switch for the grinder. And then as soon as you press the switch run over and slide back through the opening you just came through hop up on the table grab the key and get going you really want to make sure that when you press the button on the grinder that you start sprinting straight away otherwise he'll catch you so just be quick about that it's pretty much the only way to do it down the elevator he's going to hear the elevator and come and chase you so you need to be quick here come over here and open the door with the key and you want to slide into the box at the back right here. He's going to come into the room and look for you, but he won't find you. Okay, so jump up on the box. And then onto the rubber chute. I got lucky here and just sort of jumped to manage to grab the lip. But you might need to jump on the box that you were hiding in in order to jump across and grab the lip of the chute. So you can climb up into it and end up down here. I got kind of lucky. I don't know what happened. I just jumped off and ended up grabbing the lip somehow. But you're not really in any danger there. So feel free to take your time. Come through here. You need to climb up that wall so you can get into this vent. Jump up here and... Make sure you're not running across the drains here because they can stop you, but you can sprint all the way through the kitchen to get underneath this table. And if you just wait all, I don't know what this sort of sink, I guess it's a sink. Wait here for these guys to come over and look for you. Even if they look directly underneath this sink, you'll see them sort of bend over sometimes and look for you like this. They won't see you, providing you're underneath this sink. Give it a few seconds. Sometimes one of the chefs will be on the other side of you here. If he is, just wait for him to walk away and then move over here to the right. Make sure you don't run across this broken plate on the floor because they'll hear that. Jump up on the table here 
and pull this switch across to change the direction of the hooks. And then we're going to jump off this table and get underneath it quickly. You need to be quick about that because this guy's going to hear you pull the switch and run over. As soon as you're underneath the table, start moving over to the left. Sit in the back corner whilst he looks under the table. I don't think he'll spot you no matter where you are, but just to be extra safe, I like to sit in that back corner. After that, he's going to leave, remain crouched, and come out from underneath the table and start moving back towards that sink we were hiding under earlier. Make sure this guy is not looking at you, just wait for the right moment if he's moving around a little bit. Come over to the sink in the middle then, this guy will usually be at it, but providing you stay on this side, you'll be able to climb the sink, climb the plates, and he won't be able to get you. And then you can just jump onto the hook, and you're on your way. So this next bit is another one of the very difficult parts of the game, probably um, it's the second of the three areas that I think can really screw over the game for you. In the back you can see a bunch of plates in these boxes, jump off when you just pass the second one and approach the third, and then move towards the screen, and you should end up on the floor. And you want to run away from this guy whilst jumping. If you think he's going to catch you, don't hesitate to pause and back out to the main menu if you think that's going to happen. You need to be quick here, that's the only advice I can give you. Hop up on top of the boxes and jump and grab the hook to escape. You might want to practice that area. Like I said, it's a very difficult one. And um, it might require a little bit of practice. I've definitely lost runs there a couple of times. It's very frustrating. Those guys can just snag you as you're about to jump to the hooks. Um, yeah, The only advice I can give you with that area really, other than the strategy I just told you, is to just practice it. I definitely lost a few runs there. There's one more area that I feel is really nasty. Probably the worst one in the entire game. And it's annoying that it's the the very last chapter that it's in. Yeah, it's kind of just very difficult. I'll explain it when I get there the best I can, but it's one of those areas you might just want to practice. So when you climb up this ladder, you can see that there's a lot of light coming through this opening. Don't sprint through this opening. Move slowly. Edge through it. You're going to get this blinding light. If you sprint, you'll end up running off this ledge and falling to your death. So just edge yourself out of that opening to make sure you don't fall into the water. Jump and grab the chain and climb all the way up. Keep it going. We're nearly done. We're on the last sections of the game. I feel like this chapter is kind of short, but it's also, um, it's not that difficult. I'd say it's, yeah, there's, one, there's one part, there's one part that makes it really difficult. Very frustrating that it's in the last chapter, but this, this section's easier to practice because it's earlier in the chapter than the other two difficult parts. The other two difficult parts that I mentioned are literally right at the end of chapters. Whereas this one, it's pretty early on in the chapter, so you can practice it. So, once you get to the top, we're going to run across the top of this vent. You can jump if you want to, make sure you don't fall off the edge. It's fine if you want to walk slowly to play it safe. You're not in any danger in that area. I'm just in a rush a little bit, playing it a little bit risky. You don't want to fall off, but providing you're running straight, you should be fine. So, we're going to drop down here and grab the plank, pull it off hop up right here into the pipe keep moving over to your left keep running across the vent and up here towards the section you can climb up all the way up there we go I'm going to go through the opening on the right and then we need to jump across the lights that are above us Keep jumping. There we go. Squeeze through the opening in the door here. And this guy won't pay any attention to you. He's kind of just busy inhaling meat. I'm gonna go through here. This guy doesn't like you very much. I like to just keep jumping to gain some extra distance away from him. Keep going. He's going to chase you. 
jump up here and you should have plenty of time to get away from him. So for this part you need to jump up on the stool and then climb the plates in the middle. Once you do that, you want to wait for this lantern that's above you to swing towards you. It will be moving because of the motion of the ship, so just make sure you're waiting until it swings towards you and then jump. Make sure you jump at the last moment when you jump off the plate to make sure you grab it. Swing a couple of times and then you can jump the gap. This is the section I was telling you about that's very difficult to get right. Probably the hardest in the game in my opinion. The only advice I can give you is just a zigzag and try to avoid grabs. I think I ended up jumping a couple of times to get away from some cheeky grabs. Um, you might want... The, the best advice I can give you for that area is just to practice it. It's a little earlier in the chapter if you can just go to chapter select and load it, but that section is particularly nasty. You've kind of just got a zigzag in between all the gaps, and it's actually easier to run than it is to walk that part, in my opinion. I feel like if you walk, you open yourself up to more grabs. When you get here, just make sure you keep running. The chick on the end is going to try and chase you, but just run across this plank, jump and grab the lantern jump to clear the gap and land on these boxes. When you're running across here, one of the guys is going to notice you and fall off his chair and start chasing you. As soon as he falls off his chair, head back and jump up onto this ledge here. And when he smashes into the ledge that you're standing on, jump over him. Keep jumping here to get extra distance away from him. Reach the end and then slide through the opening. And you should have plenty of time to get away from him. Okay, as soon as you squeeze through the door there, keep moving in the direction I am. Make sure you're sprinting because the chef's going to come down in the elevator and he'll chase you into this bathroom. So just come and slide under the sink heel and just wait. Okay, when he leaves, he's going to knock this tin off the shelf that you can grab and use to smash the mirror. Hop through the window, jump up on the chair, grab the gate and just climb all the way up. Sorted. Squeeze through the bars here. And then run along the pipes. Make sure you're sticking on the pipe that's further away from you, this one. Because you need to run all the way along to the shelf. I think you can probably jump off onto the shelf that was below us there, but either one is fine. And then we're going to make our way to the elevator that the chef came down in. Down or up we go. Okay, so you're going to get chased by a bunch of these guys here, and you want to make sure that you're jumping if you can to get as much distance from these guys as possible. I think I almost messed up here and bumped into the door. I was too far up. But yeah. Just missed those guys there. I was very lucky. You might want to make sure you line yourself up better with the door than I did. Keep going. When you reach this point, don't jump down the stairs when you're moving towards the screen. Because it's actually slower. Make sure you're only running down those stairs. Keep moving. Jump up on the shelf here, jump up onto the table. Move a little bit further away from these guys that are all trying to grab you. Keep jumping for that extra distance. Make sure you jump at the last second to grab the lantern and clear the gap. If you jump too early, you probably won't make the jump there, so make sure you jump late. This is my advice. So here in this chapter is where we have Six's Hunger Pains. That's pretty much the end of this chapter if you've made it this far there really shouldn't be a lot left for you now there's only a couple more things in, in a couple more areas in which you can die in the game and to be in my opinion they're actually pretty easy I don't really feel like the rest of the game is that difficult at all providing you know what you're doing okay Tastes like DLC. Okay. Hop up on the box. Through the gap here. Keep going and you've got a ladder to climb. 
poor little gnome. All right, all the way up. And run over here and grab the tin that's next to the shelf. Head to the elevator. Chuck it at the button. Sorted. Wait for the elevator to come down and then jump on it. And we're away. Okay. So head out here. And to the right. No danger while you're going up these stairs. You should be fine. All the way up. Keep going, keep going. Right, so at this point, you want to make sure you're crouching from about here or so. If you want to play extra safe, crouch your whole way through this room. Make sure you're not too close to the geisha. I like to make sure I'm pretty much at the as far back as I can to get past these mannequins whilst crouching. Don't sprint crouch, just crouch normally. If you're too close to her, even while you're crouching and moving as slow as possible, she'll hear you and turn around and grab you. So just make sure you're far away from her and not like right behind her whilst you're crouching. Okay, so once you get to the bed, you can stand up and move normally and then hop up here, knock this pot off the drawer, grab the key, and we're off. Okay, let's go. So we need to go all the way to the right. If you were observant, you might have noticed there was a locked door. If you've never seen this before, by the way. There's a locked door on the far right. We ran past it earlier. We're going to come out here. All the way down the stairs. All the way down. And... Use the key on the padlock. So, in this section, make sure you're getting your sprint on and lining yourself up pretty much like I am. You can use jump to get extra distance. She's going to chase you here. I like to jump here because she is really fast and you need to be quick to slide under here without getting grabbed. So, it's a good idea to use those jumps to get extra distance. If you wait by the door... Um, where you use the padlock, you can get Six's stamina back up. But providing you jump like I did and you don't run into anything, you should be fine just to get through there without too much difficulty. Like I mentioned earlier on, Six does have sort of like a stamina limit and she'll get worn out after a while and run slower. So if you unlock the door and just wait there for a second, you can recharge Six's stamina before you run into that hallway if you like. Which can make it a little bit quicker for you. So, come through here, all the way to the right, open up that the door by pulling the plank off, grab the mirror, come back into this room, and you're going to have to fight the geisha lady. So, here we are. Make sure you're standing in the light. Point the mirror in her direction. You have to do this six times. Pick the mirror back up as fast as you can and look for the spot of light. It's over there on the right. So be ready for her. Sometimes she'll attack you head on like this. And other times she'll sort of circle the light. Just make sure you're pointing it in her direction whenever you see her. And eventually you'll get her with the attack. You can see she sort of swoops around a little bit. She should do it here in a second. Yeah, like that. You can't get her when she's doing that, but just make sure you keep facing her. There you go. That was kind of a delayed one, but managed to get her there. This fight is actually pretty easy. You really shouldn't struggle with it too much. Okay. Same again, then. Wait for it. Here she comes. I'm going to say on the next one. There it is. So is that four times now? I've got her? Four or five? There we go. 
The spotlight was staying in the same place for me. It may move for you though, so if the light fades away, just be ready to move. If it doesn't, just stay in the middle. There we go. And that's it. If you've got this far, you shouldn't have anything else uh, that you've got to worry about. You've just got to chomp on the geisha lady and leave. Hopefully that'll get you your achievement. What's strange about this is the time of the video at the moment is like 55 minutes or so. For me at least. Um, but the game time when I check my save file is like 45 minutes. So I'm like well under an hour. But they don't quite load uh, line up. I guess maybe the cutscene at the beginning and some of the loading screens count. But there's really not that many to add up to like 10 minutes I don't think. And I don't know how many, or uh, sorry, I don't know when the timer stops towards the achievement. Like, does it stop here because we've essentially beaten the game? There's nothing else that can really kill us. Like, maybe the part at the end is just like a uh, courtesy type deal. Almost like an interactive cutscene. But I'll show it all. The credits on this game are also quite long. So I don't think I'll show those, but once you gain control of six again, you just want to keep moving forward more or less to escape the ship. Okay. It's time to suck some souls. So I wonder if Six is in Little Nightmares 2, to some degree. I don't think you play as her. Although I might be wrong. I haven't looked into the story. Although I don't think much has been revealed. Same as this game though, like there's not really a huge amount they tell you about the plot. A lot of the theories that I've read say that the geisha lady is Six's mother. Right. Keep heading towards the door then. We're on our way out. A very good game. Okay. So we should also see the one gnome that we saved here. If you've saved any gnomes, you'll see them at the end of the game. Walk up towards the door. But yeah. Hopefully that helps you get you your achievement. Um, if you guys are looking for more Little Nightmares guides, I should have a couple more out for you. I have got the collectibles for this game, but I should also be doing the DLC soon. I haven't got around to those, but I'm going to do them very soon. Um... Yeah, thank you all very much for watching. If you'd like to show some support to me, just drop a like on the video, maybe a comment. That also really helps me out. If you want to support me even further than that, you can come and follow me on Twitch if you like, where we tend to do challenge runs like this and have fun with a bunch of different games. I also do a lot of blind playthroughs over there for indie horror games and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, much love for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comment section. Like I said, have yourself a fantastic day. Other guides should be around somewhere for you now. And until next time, Take it easy. Mm.